Uh, good afternoon, professors and researchers. This is Jin Su Young, and uh, I am a PhD student in Department of Global Area Studies in Busan University of Foreign Studies. Today, I would like to present uh, Tariqa Tijania. Tariqa Tijania and uh, I would appreciate if you could listen my listen to my presentation. The title of the presentation is Sufism in Central Mediterranean Focus on Tijania Order. Introduction the Central Mediterranean has historically played as important a role in Islamic development as the Arabian Peninsula. Maghreb is located at the intersection of the history of Islam, the Mediterranean, the Atlantic Ocean, Africa, and Europe, and has served as an economic channel and cultural mediator between neighboring nations and regions for centuries. The contribution and role of the Maghrebians was pivotal to spread of Islam to the African continent. The exact origin of Sufism is imprecise, and nobody is truly sure why Sufis are Sufi. There are several other theories of its origin. The etymology of the Arabic word Sufi is unclear. It may come from Suf, which means all, but there is also the belief that a group of the of devout followers of the Prophet Muhammad were woolen clocks. Woolen clocks in those days were cheaper and less comfortable than general clothes. On the other hand, the word may come from Sufa, a raised platform or staff, and refer to a group devoted Muslims who used to congregate on a platform outside the house of the Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad. It is argued that the word Sufia was borrowed from Sophia, a Greek word for wisdom. But there are several other theories of its origin. This research studies the Tijania order born in Algeria in the central Mediterranean. Tijania emerged in the Maghreb in the late 18th century and spread to northern and western Africa. The, the, estimated, the estimated number of Tijanis around the world is difficult to pinpoint, but most Commonly, the number is around 100 million. The Tijania has been the most prominent Sufi order on the African continent since the 19th century. This study examines the origin of the Tijania and its obligatory litanies and its condition. As we can see that this map, the black point is the Tijania, the Tariqa Tijania. So we, as we can see, Tariqa Tijania is spread, spread in the Western and Northern Africa. Terminology of Sufism. Al-Khazali, a great Islamic theologian, recognized not only God, but also humans' own inner experience. He said there are two meanings of the Quran, Al-Zahir and Batin. Zahir refers to the outer dimension of Islamic faith of apparent meaning of the Quran. But din refers to the inner spiritual dimension of the Islamic faith. Jahir is interpretation of Islam and apparent meaning using correct knowledge of Arabic. And Badin added more to Zahir acquired knowledge and demanded outstanding insight looking for hidden meaning. After all, inter the interest of Sufis was the meaning hidden behind the letter along with the superficial interpretation of the Quran. Furthermore, there is a dichotomous relationship between tariqa and sharia. 
Both words indicate road. The word Sharia refers to the concept of the way or path and has come to refer to a specific path. The term Tariqa symbolizes the inner dimension of the Sufi quest. This is the mysterious path of Islam. Sharia has come to represent the external dimension of Islam. A system of obligations and prohibition that all Muslims should know why Tariqa has become the internal dimension of religion for the chosen few. Sufism, like other disciplines, is difficult to define as one academic de definition. This is because the definitions made are also different as the methods taken differ depending on their environment and location. Sufism has been influential throughout the Islamic world, including Maghreb, and Sufism was important in the religious and social lives of most Muslims. Along with politics and economics, Sufism appeared in various forms according to region and period. Historically, the, exist, the existence of Sufi sect in Maghreb has great significance. Several important Sufi orders were born in Algeria, such as Tijaniya, Darqawiya, Isawiya, and Shadiliya and Sanusiya. Sufi orders form a genealogy around the Sheikh. In general, when disciples gather around the Sheikh, Tarifa is formed. They gather in a place called Zawiya to learn how to exp experience God directly and spiritually. Here, they commit themselves to religious devotion, charity work, and missionary work. All students follow the Sheikh Zikr. They develop it or their exerted influence on all areas of Maghreb's politics, economy, society, and culture, and sometimes had the power to control the state. Among the Sufi, Sufi orders that were born in Algeria and affected the central Mediterranean. Tariqa Tijaniya. Tariqa Tijaniya emerged in the Algeria during the 18th century. It was founded by Ahmad al Tijani. According to his biographers, when he was seven years old, he memorized the Quran. Furthermore, he studied the basic text of Maliki school of jurisprudence. And when he was 16, he took over the administration of Zawiya. Then he studied for a number of years under ulama in Fez, famed for its Islamic learning. When he, was, when he returned to teach Islam in his hometown, he had many students due to the fact that he could answer any question posed to him. Tijaniya has different, different characteristics than other Sufi orders. Usually, other Sufi orders examine the genealogy of reaching the Prophet Muhammad, but he claimed that Muhammad appeared to him. If someone became a member of the Tijaniya, he could not serve as a member of any other sect. When Ahmad al Tijani met Prophet Muhammad, directly, not just in his dream. Muhammad told him to leave aside his previous Sufi orders and gave him the distinct litany, it's called Wirat, of the Tijani Sufi pass. Tijaniya was establishment via involvement of Prophet Muhammad. Then he returned to his hometown of Ain Madhi where he founded Tariqa and spread it to Muslims. He made the pilgrimage to many parts of North Africa, obtained disciples, established Zawiya, and built Muqaddam. 
In other words, it is known that Tareqa Tijaniya founded the religious order with, with the authority of the Prophet Muhammad. According to Ahmad al Tijani, the, the Prophet set forth the principles of Tariqa in these terms keep on this path without withdrawing into seclusion and without putting an end to interaction with other men until you reach the station which is your due. As the above sentence suggests, one of the characteristics of the Tijaniya is to balance word and sufism characteristics. The condition of the Tariqa Tijaniya, there are numerous conditions in this Tariqa, but 11 conditions are mentioned specifically in this, this study. The first, to receive initiation into the Tariqa from a qualified and licensed Muqaddam. The second, the person take, taking the Tariqa cannot have any other Tariqa or he should give up what he had before. Third, the person cannot visit non-Tijani saint, alive or dead, for the purpose of de deriving spiritual benefit. The fourth, to perform the ritual prayers in congregation as much as possible. Fifth, you should love your sheikh throughout your life. The sixth, do not feel satisfied with your worship or feel safe because you found yourself in a high spiritual position. The seventh, when one takes his tariqa tijaniya, he must adhere to it completely until death. Eighth, to believe that Sheikh Ahmad al Tijani saw the Prophet Muhammad in broad daylight. Nine, facing the Qibla whenever possible during the recitation of the Wirid, except for the traveler. Ten, reciting the Wirid while seated not lying down, reclining or standing unless you have physical disposition that causes difficulty. The last one is to always be virtuous and kind towards your parents. Sheikh al Tijani said, he who is not virtuous to his parents has failed in his journey in this Tariqa. Looking at the condition of Tariqa Tijaniya, the Tijaniya is the only Islamic order given that it is not allowed to join other religious group and that it that and that it is not possible to visit the graves or sh shrines of saints other other sect. In addition, when in the condition of believing that Ahmad al Tijani met Muhammad in person, unlike any other Sufism, it emphasizes the justification of the Tariqa Tijaniya. Obligatory litanies of the Tariqa Tijaniya. Allah says, remember me and I will remember you. Thank me and do not be ungrateful. Sheikh Ahmed al Tijani encouraged the reciter of the Quran and advises Followers to read at least one, thir one thirtieth a day, which equals to one completion of the Quran every month. The best word or the, uh, the best zikr in the Quran are La ilaha illallah. Therefore, La ilaha illallah is the foundation of or Turuk or, or, or Tariqa. Wirut is Litani. Select combination of names of Allah and ayat of Quran, which are recited. The wirid from Sheikh Ahmad al Tijani has two types. The first one is the obligatory wirid, which is called al lajim, and superlegatory wirid. This study only discuss, discusses the obligatory wirid. The Wirid al Lajim consists, consists of morning and evening zikr and wazifa. 
The Tijani virut is as follow as Reciting is digafar. It means I beg forgiveness of God 100 times and then the prayer for the Prophet Muhammad 100 times and then the Shahada 100 times. When a disciple increases upon the virut by mistake, he also recites istighfar 100 times with, with the intention of correction. When a disciple has decreased the virut by mistake, he has to recite what he has omitted and then recite istighfar 100 times with the intention of correction. The third tariq Tijaniya Baraka. Baraka is a blessing power in Islam and a prominent concept in Sufism. Baraka can be found within physical objects, places, and people as chosen by God. This force begins directly from God into creation that is worthy of Baraka. People who have received Baraka are thought thought to have the abilities to perform miracles, such as healing the sick and reviving the dead. The shrine, the Prophet Muhammad, is considered a source of blessing in the Islamic world. There are three sources of Baraka in the Tijaniya Zawiya in Fez. The first baraka in Tijaniya Zawiya is visitation shrine of Ahmad al Tijani. The shrine of the Prophet Muhammad is considered a source of blessing in the Islamic world. For the Tijani, the shrine of the founder of the Tariqa is one of the major baraka. One of the major baraka. The tongue a shrine is place for communication between the founder and each pilgrim who can offer special prayers for himself or his family in front of the tomb of Ahmad al Tijani. He can formulate demand of divine intervention through the baraka of Ahmad al Tijani in his personal or family problems. The second, Bloodline of the Ahmad al Tijani. Prayers visit to fast to request the baraka and give hadiyah to the descendant of Ahmad al Tijani in the hope of baraka. Usually, the grandsons of the founder are seated in different places of the zawiya to offer blessing and prayers for pilgrim. The third, the last one is Water from the Well by Ahmad al Tijani. The third source of main baraka is Water from the Well that was dug by Ahmad al Tijani and is linked to Zamzam in Mecca. Pilgrims claimed that there was a special pipe that connected Sheikh Tijani's well with the Zamzam in Mecca. For pilgrims, this water is blessed and unlike other methods of, of baraka is advantageous because it can be transported home from the zawiya. It is used in a variety of occasions to heal, protect and bring success to the user and their families and friends. Conclusion Sufi and Sunni both follow Islam and Sharia or the, or the Islamic code of life alone. But uh, each Sufi has various tariqa or methods and repeated rec recitation called zikr or zikr and wirid. Sufism cannot be defined as one, as one because each denomination has a different religious Consciousness. Sufism traditionally is ebbing and gaining in different religions, affecting various regions and countries. Among them, Tariqa Tijaniya emerged in Algeria and has had a huge impact 
on Northern and Western Africa until today. This paper studies study Cartesianian a Sufism in, in the Central Mediterranean. This study studied Dari Cartesiania and its condition, obligatory litanies and baraka. Through this study, it can be seen that Tijania order is not simply a Sufi folk belief because there are clear founders and doctrines and systemic religious. Tariqa Tijaniya is distinct from any Sufi orders. Ordinary Sufism follows Muhammad's genealogy or talks with him in a dream. However, Ahmad al Tijani met Muhammad in person and heard his prophecy. And Ahmad al Tijani said that Muhammad told him to leave the other Sufi tariqa he had before and create a new tariqa. In other words, Ahmad al Tijani has authority that his order was not only by himself, but by Muhammad. Thank you for listening to my presentation.